Welcome back to another episode of Meat Sweats. Today, it's time to go to school real quick and we're gonna be handing out a lesson on everything that you need to know from start to finish. Breaking down everything, in-depth review here on the whole packer brisket. I'm honestly not sure at the moment how we're even gonna do this. We're gonna break it down into a couple different videos for sure, maybe two or three, uh, but we're gonna get through everything here. We're gonna go through trimming, seasoning, the cook, the wrap, slicing. We're gonna break down everything you need to know step by step because at the end of the series, your brisket is gonna be going from average to savage. So let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start off with trimming this brisket. And, you know, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily the most overlooked aspect of a brisket cook, but it's definitely the one that like easily, easily separates a real quality brisket cook from one where, you know, your buddy just threw it on the smoker, not really knowing what to do with it because he was bored. Um, you know, that brisket's probably gonna turn out like fine, uh, but if you're looking to really elevate your brisket a little bit, if you're looking to give people something that they're like, damn, that was awesome. Uh, the easiest way to get that is to start off with a real good trim. And listen, I know it almost feels sacred. Like you go to the butcher shop, you ask for this big old hunk of meat, brisket ain't cheap, right? Like you're paying a pretty penny for it. You almost feel bad digging into it before you even throw it on the smoker. Um, you know, I'm cutting, but you know, by the time that we're done with this brisket, like we're probably gonna cut off three, four, five pounds of fat alone. Um, we're gonna use that fat later, right? We're gonna save most of those trimmings. You can throw it into burgers, sausage. You can render down the fat, make beef towel out of it. So like, don't get rid of all the trimmings here and just throw that away, because then you're throwing out money. But if you are looking to go uh, from, you know, just elevate that brisket cook, you gotta start with a good trim. All right, so we're gonna start off on this bottom end of the brisket here. Uh, luckily, my butcher was already kind enough. There's usually gonna be a nice uh, big old chunk of fat right around here on this underside. That's gonna be the heel fat. Looks like my butcher already took most of that out, which is awesome. Shout out to Juntas Prime and Reading Terminal. Um, but this is gonna be the side of the brisket that it's gonna be laying flat on the smoker. Um, so we're gonna want this to end up being just as flat as possible so that we have a nice uh, smooth surface to work with here. Um, so, you know, with most of that heel fat already out, all I'm gonna do is just kind of smooth that out a little bit because we're gonna want a nice flat surface, like I said, so. You know, you don't need to go crazy here um, unless, you know, you, you don't have a butcher who already took that out for you, in which case, you know, you're gonna remove pretty much that entire heel uh, just cause that's gonna be fat that doesn't render down well. We can throw that into our trim bowl. Um, but, you know, that, that's just gonna be, if you don't get rid of that before the cook, you're gonna end up you know, having to deal with it later when you're slicing. Um, so we're gonna smooth that out. And then you know, there's, there's just gonna be you know, just, just some of this random fat around here. So we're just gonna clean that up a little bit. We don't need to go crazy. Uh, but when you are trimming on this side, uh, just make sure that we're gonna be cutting with the grain here. Uh, you know, if, if we start just kind of hacking away at this thing, it's gonna create you know, a whole bunch of pockets for air and moisture to get into, and then that's gonna rub off all the bark that we tried to develop on here. So we're gonna trim with the grain, just, you know, get rid of however much you want on this side. Uh, you know, this side of the brisket isn't quite as important as when we get to the fat cap in a couple of seconds here, um, but, you know, just try to make it as pretty as you can. All right, so once we're done with the, uh, with the meat side of the brisket, we're gonna flip it over and now we are on the fatty side. We are at the fat cap. Uh, so the first cut that we're gonna make here, uh, these brisket, every brisket, it's gonna have this big old hump right here, right? This, this nice fin, the mohawk, the hump, whatever you call it. Um, listen, this is gonna be a cut that hurts because we're gonna get rid of a lot of meat here. But if you see under this hump, uh, there's just a whole bunch of fat that's down there um, and you know, none of that is gonna render well at all. It's gonna be just a big giant uh, just strip of fat right in between your slices. It's gonna be terrible to look at. It's gonna be terrible to eat. Um, so this is one of those cuts where yeah, it hurts at the time, um, but you know, it's gonna be worth it at the end. All 
All right, so once we remove that hump, I mean, here's here's that strip that we just cut off. And, you know, as you can see, there's still, you know, a, a ton of good meat that we can use there. So we'll separate that meat from the fat when we throw it into our waste bin and then, or not waste, but trim bucket. And, you know, we'll, we'll still use it. And then, you know, at the end here, uh, you know, we're still gonna clean a lot of that out, but we start to see, you know, the, the marbling that's in this point. Um, you know, we can tell that these are gonna end up being real juicy, great slices here in the point. Uh, and then, you know, we just expose that a little bit more and now we know what we're working with inside. All right, so once we remove the heel fat from the meat side of the brisket, once we remove the hump from the fat cap side of the brisket, uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna start shaping this thing up. Um, now this is a part of the trimming process that really depends on, you know, what kind of smoker you're using. Um, you know, if, if you're using, uh, you know, like a, a Kamado, like a green egg or something like that, or, you know, maybe even a drum where, uh, you know, the, the way that the smoke is moving across the meat uh, is more of just like convection and, and circular. The aerodynamic aspect of the way that you trim your brisket isn't quite as important as it is if you're using an offset smoker or you know like a pellet cooker like a Traeger or something like that. Um, but you know we just want to kind of trim this up get it to the shape um, that you know everything is going to cook nice and evenly or at least as close to even as possible and then you know as you can see um you know down here at the flat like there's still a ton of fat here um on this fat cap and we're gonna have to trim that down to you know quarter inch um you know just a sliver above the meat just enough to protect it from drying out too much but that's still way too much fat that we're gonna have to deal with so we might as well get rid of it now instead of when we're slicing later All right, so once we have that fat cap to where we want it, once we have you know everything kind of uh, you know smoothed out, even out to you know where we want this to lay on the cooker, the last thing we're gonna do here, um, you know, just gonna kind of round off these edges at the flat. Again, this is one of those things that it kind of just depends on what type of smoker you're working with. Um, but if you're working with something like an offset where you know the smoke's gonna be coming up and over the brisket you don't want to have any of these you know sharp corners that are going to catch smoke um you know and kind of stop the flow of that smoke so we're just going to round that off a little bit um so just you know kind of taking it a little bit at a time and we're, you know we're just gonna round it off pretty simple and you know at the end like i i know that this looks uh like you know we just cut off so much meat so much money um but i'm telling you that in the end it is all going to be worth it all right so you have your brisket all trimmed up uh at this point you should probably have your smoker your fire started or you know doing whatever you need to do in your smoker to start getting that up to temperature um, but we still have plenty of time here to get some rub on this brisket we want to start building this bark as soon as possible uh for this brisket cook we're just gonna go uh equal parts salt black pepper and then just a little bit of garlic powder in here as well um you know you can throw whatever you want on here i'm just gonna go the standard salt pepper a little bit of garlic um now to get the rub to stay on here, I mean, as we've been trimming it, uh, it's definitely been, you know, warming up a little bit. So it, it's a little sticky to the touch right now. So honestly, I could probably throw on this rub, wouldn't be too big of an issue, but um, we're gonna still throw a little bit of a binder on there. Now, plenty of people use mustard, some people use hot sauce, some people use a marinade, whatever. I'm just gonna go uh, a little bit of olive oil and just apply it on um, both sides of the brisket here and the most important piece of advice that i'll give right off the bat is after we apply this binder uh, the first part that we are going to season on this brisket is going to be this meat side the side that is going to be laying on the smoker uh, because at the end of the cook, you know, this is gonna be the part that's on the bottom, so we're not really gonna be looking at it that much. 
Um, so, you know, if any of the rub kind of washes off as we're, you know, kind of flipping this around on the cutting board a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. Just make sure every once in a while you kind of swirl up whatever you're using to apply the rub just to make sure that everything is coming out at an even rate, right? You don't want to end up with, you know, just salt or pepper at the end because you're pouring a little too heavy on one. So swirl it up if you need to. Make sure we hit the sides, right? Don't let, we, we, we don't want to be messing around with naked briskets, right? We can't be throwing naked briskets out there into the world uh, or even partially naked briskets. Oh, and another, just a tip, like don't, throw your rub on there and then start to like actually rub your meat, right? Like wait until, you know, you're, you're home alone in your room, dim the lights, get a, some candles going, wait until then to actually rub your meat. Um, here, you know, you can pat that rub onto the meat to make sure that it sticks. But once we start rubbing, that's when you end up getting, you know, some pockets of rub over here while this side's got nothing at all. So, uh, you know, for the sake of keeping everything nice and even, don't go around literally rubbing your meat. All right, so once you have that meat side done, we can flip it over, get to the presentation side of our brisket. And, you know, from this point out, we're gonna try our best not to flip this again at all. Um, as soon as we start to get this rub to tack on to this presentation side of the brisket, um, we wanna make sure that it just kind of sits there and gets ready to go onto the smoker. So, you know, if we start flipping this thing around, moving it too much, like we're gonna start to lose a little too much of the rub on the cutting board. It's just gonna be, you know, a little bit of a mess. So um, here, you know, we just wanna, we can go a little heavier on this side uh, than, than we did on the meat side, just because, you know, we're gonna have that fat that's gonna render down uh, top, you know, on top of this brisket here. And that's where, you know, the juiciness is gonna come in. That's where the flavor's gonna come in for, you know, a little bit of the part. And there's plenty of flavor in this brisket that's not fat. Uh, but we can apply a little more liberally here. Make sure that we still, you know, hit the sides on any parts that we might've missed on the first go around. And in the end, here is your trimmed up and seasoned up brisket. We've got the point here, fatty side of the brisket coming on down into the lean. You can see the, the fat cap poking through there a little bit, just that quarter inch with a nice, you know, thick bit of meat there at the bottom. So those are gonna make for some great slices. Now this, this might not be the greatest brisket in the world, but I can promise you right now, it's setting you up for success. Now that your brisket's all trimmed and seasoned up, uh, you should have your fire going at this point uh, or, you know, whatever type of smoker you're using, just we wanna make sure that we get that up to temperature before we throw the meat on there. So we're gonna be running this at around 275 degrees. Again, any smoker works for here. So just get it to around 275 degrees or wherever your smoker likes to run. Um, and then from there, you know, we have the actual cook of it. So, you know, we, we're gonna go through cooking, spraying, wrapping, slicing, uh, but that's all gonna be in another video, all right? So be on the lookout for the next episode of Meat Sweats where we go through all that. Saturdays are for the brisket. Let's go.